Hello everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of Kerbal Space Program. Uh, we are still getting ready to launch this uh, space station sort of core modules thing into orbit around Kerbin. Uh, the last episode I just tried too aggressive of a gravity turn while the solid rocket boosters were still in effect. I don't totally understand what causes the, the tip over when using solid rocket boosters. I think that like... Maybe the, de the deal is that as the solid rocket fuels burn, the ship gets more top-heavy. Because the one time I really noticed I was having a ton of trouble was when I had mounted the solid rocket boosters quite low on the craft. And it did fine on the way up, but as they were getting empty, I couldn't even po keep it pointed straight up with SAS. It was just starting to tip over on its own. And I realized that, like, oh, all the fuel in these bottom rocket boosters uh, had had been exhausted, and now all the weight of the craft was in the top. But in the meantime, the solid rocket boosters on the bottom were still pushing, and so it was like kind of the ship was very top heavy and flipped itself over. So maybe you could like understand that happening if the bottom of these burned up first and then the top. It seems kind of weird to me. I don't think that's really what's happening, but it's one possible explanation. Um. I did some fiddling around with this uh, off-camera just before the episode started. I don't think I actually made any changes. I was playing around with um, maybe whether I should include a radiator, like how much heat does this science lab generate? Uh, but I looked around online and it seems like pretty much the only use for radiators is like nuclear engines. You don't really need radiators for any realistic crafts that you're going to build in stock. Um, and I also thought about what is the next ship we're going to build to dock with this. And I think we'll just do something fairly unambitious. We'll build a an orbiting sort of uh, just orbit orbital stuff only with like a bunch of science bits attached. And we'll dock and put some science in. Maybe leave another Kerbin on there, Kerbal on there. Sort of do like a new transfer. Of we could send them up right now, of course, but I want to like sort of play around with the, the stuff they do in real life of like send up a new astronaut and bring back the old one and so on like um so do something fairly simple like this but with science and hopefully some extra fuel like I'll make this upper stage much smaller um since we're not going to be adding any new parts to it and then hopefully we'll have a fair bit more fuel left in this lower stage that we can transfer into the space station uh and then we'll just uh along with all the science and then we'll deorbit and bring it home. So uh, that, that's sort of my idea. I haven't built that ship yet, but it should be a simple modification of this one. So let's get started on launching this. And uh, we'll, we'll hopefully this should. Gosh dang it! They put a bunch of dang jerks in the in the in the in the ship again. I was thinking, like, I shouldn't have to go back to the crew menu, right? It should be just the same as it was before, but no. All right. I just want to send up this this Burton guy. All right, try again. And let me double check my action groups here. Did I set them right? One is the solar panels, two is the antenna. Perfect. All right, save, launch. And U is lights. I always think it's L, but that's like a, a an RCS thing. So maybe that's how I'll, I'll remember that. L can't be lights because I know it's RCS. Anyway, uh, we'll keep the throttle pretty low on this stage. We'd like to save the fuel in this if we can. Um, and yeah, the staging is all still right. So take off in three, two, one, lift. Just keep it pointed straight up. Don't do any aggressive gravity turns. We could try to get to maybe like 85 degrees, but uh, even that is probably pushing it. I'll just try to... Oh, let's, let's get Apoapsis on view here. Okay, great. In fact, I really shouldn't even be looking at the ship at all. Let's just stay looking at Apoapsis for practice with instrument flight. Let's tip over a bit. There's our fuel levels. But that's, that's probably plenty. Fighting me, it's not trying to tip over. Our apoapsis is getting reasonably high. Almost out of solid fuel, so let's switch back to the staging view. And uh, jet 
this in this junk now. There we go. And turn on the main thing and just sort of like tip over ex all the way to the horizon, please, if you can. Perfect. Um, I saw someone else's tutorial about like how to fly a badly built ship um, into orbit. And I don't think this ship is badly built, but it, it shared one characteristic, which was the, um, you really can't turn it very much on the ascent because it's powered by heavy solid rocket boosters. Um, and so, yeah, this is, this is not raising our apoapsis too, too terribly much. Um, anyway, and it reminded me of a thing that there's this phenomenon called the, what the heck is the effect called? It's not the Hellman effect. It's the heart, heart, some German name, right? Um, all right, I'd say we've done about, actually our apoapsis is staying just fine. I think we're, we're doing, burning right now is fine. It's not like it's raising our apoapsis unnecessarily high because we're pointing at the horizon. Um, I can't remember, Her Hernog? Her Her Herfeld? Starts with an H, sounds German. I don't know. Um, anyway, which is something that really, apparently exists in real life, but seemed completely bizarre to me. Uh, which is, okay, so a rocket engine, right? Um, it is able to exert some amount of, uh, it is able to change your ship's velocity. And we sort of think of that in terms of how many meters per second it can change by, right? We call that Delta V. That's how much Delta V it will take to adjust our orbit from what it is now, change in velocity uh, to what we want it to be. And assuming that you're out of the atmosphere, then no matter where you burn, um, no matter what your position is when, uh, and your speed when you're burning, a given engine for a given uh, ship will always apply mm, burning, burning for a certain length of time with a certain engine on a certain ship will, will apply the same amount of delta V. It doesn't matter how fast you're going. Uh, and that is true, but what isn't true, which surprised me, uh, it is not the case that you get the same amount of energy. And this is getting into like physics stuff, like what's the difference between energy and velocity, right? Of course there is one. And I sort of like know what the difference is, but anyway, like the, the thing that is interesting is that the closer, the faster a rocket is going with respect to whatever reference frame, uh, while it burns, it's gaining the same amount of velocity, but if it's moving faster, uh, then that burn is adding more energy compared to the same burn while moving slower. And like, I kind of looked at why this is and it sort of makes a little bit of sense, but it seems really weird to me. Anyway, I bring this all up because um, this tutorial about like how to fly a badly built ship mentioned that it's better to extend your orbit while you're low. Uh, than while you're high because you have a higher velocity relative to the planet before you reach apoapsis. Sort of once you reach apoapsis, if you just shot yourself perfectly straight up, then at apoapsis your velocity is zero, right? We're never actually in a trajectory like that, but if we were. Uh, and that's like not very much, and it, it means that it's your engine is as inefficient as it can be uh, in giving you more energy. Let's just deploy the solar panels and stuff. Great. And the antenna as well. Um, so if you if you burn while you're in the atmosphere, your, your velocity with respect to the planet is non-zero and you're therefore uh, getting more energy out of the same amount of rocket. And this is like one way to think about the justification for this is that the propellant you're expelling has not just chemical energy, but also kinetic energy in that like the faster your ship is moving, the faster the propellant is moving. And therefore you can use up its energy to go faster. I don't know. 
crazy physics stuff. Anyway, that's why we turned horizontally and burned early, whereas I hadn't been doing that before. And uh, as you can, of course, see, we are now in orbit. Lovely. Uh, we have some fuel left over. Not a lot, but um, should be plenty to get us into the orbit we wanted, which was around 150 kilometers. It's, uh, it doesn't super matter, of course. Um, you know, we could be here. But I think it will be easier, as I mentioned in a previous episode, um, for uh, other ships to dock with us if we're in a circular orbit at around um, uh, like 150 kilometers. So the first thing to do is regularize our orbit. Right now we're at like 89 degrees, which is great. Very good. Normally, like if I were just going to the moon, I wouldn't bother adjusting my orbit at all here. Um, but uh, we plan for a large number of ships to dock with this eventually over the course of our Kerbal expedition. And uh, the fewer of them that have to adjust their inclination to match up to us, the better. I'd like us to be in a perfectly equatorial orbit if possible, so that well-launched ships, which are in an equatorial orbit, don't have to do any adjustment to catch up with us. Uh, at 89 degrees, they probably wouldn't have much of an issue, but, um, you know, we might as well do it right, yeah? So, let's, um... There we go, set Kerbin as the focus. Let's just add a maneuver here at the descending node to burn normal for, uh, hello? Oh, yeah, that's fixing things. I thought it was going the wrong way. For just a tiny little burn. I really should be able to get to exactly zero. Why am I not? Well, okay, let's let's make sure we put the maneuver right on the descending node. Add a maneuver where we burn. Go back. Where we burn normal. Whoa, okay. That was right, but I just went too far. Zero. Perfect. So it's just a nice, quiet 70 meters per second burn to get us into a perfectly equatorial uh, orbit. I think that's well worth the, um, the time invested and the fuel, which is like basically none. Uh, and so something that, uh, while we're doing this relatively uninteresting burn, uh, you remember a couple episodes ago when we did the moon landing and we had that weird event during re-entry where, like, I mysteriously ran out of electric, uh, electric charge? I was looking over the footage and I realized that it wasn't the case. Like, okay, yes, I did forget to redeploy the solar panels, uh, but actually that wasn't what caused the problem. Uh, the problem was that all the batteries were attached to the orbital stage, and when I jettisoned the orbital stage to switch to my uh, re-entry stage... Uh, surprise, surprise, we, um, what's going on? Did I just go past my node already? No, I went past where my ascending node is going to be. Okay. Uh, all of the electricity in those batteries was no longer available to us. So if I had transferred all the electricity from those external batteries into the command pod before jettisoning, I would have been fine. Um... Okay, we'll just do a very gentle burn to finish leveling this off at 0, 0.0 degrees, please. There we go. Perfect. Um, anyway, so that was a, a mistake that I uh, should learn from and make sure the batteries either put some batteries on the final stage or remember to transfer energy out of the external batteries into the final stage before I deorbit. So there's that. Um, a lesson learned of a sort, although I'll probably need to relearn it a few times. So this is uh, periapsis coming up, so we'll just put a maneuver here to burn a prograde. Get our apoapsis out to... Yeah, I mean, 150 is not that high. I think um, geostationary orbit is like 700 kilometers or something, which would be kind of cool, but uh, not actually very utilitarian. 
uh, which is what we would like for this uh, vessel to be. There we go. That looks like 150 kilometers. So again, this is a very, very small burn to adjust our orbit, even smaller than the one we just did to uh, adjust our inclination. Um, and, you know, 150 is not a magic number. It's not important that we get it perfect. Um, but uh, let's just warp to, like, real close here. But uh, it seems like a good uh, thing to aim for, anyway. So I'm actually just going to say burn prograde. Forget the maneuver node. It's a small enough node that uh, I would rather just watch our apoapsis go up and stop when we are where I want it to be. And uh, once that's at 150, we'll circle around to apoapsis and raise our periapsis until we have a circular orbit. It's all stuff you guys have seen many times before. Uh, let's warp to here. And then we'll finally get a chance to use our new science stuff. And we'll also uh, take a look around inside the ship, um, just because it, it's kind of cool. I, I built a, a thing like this uh, on my last save. Um, after I had gotten frustrated with losing a bunch of episodes but and decided to stop recording, but before I had created a new science mode save. Uh, so we'll just point retrograde here. No, prograde. Prograde is way better. Um, and keep an eye on periapsis and apoapsis. And not burn just yet, because it's just a couple seconds. Yeah, we're still 40 seconds away from this node. Actually, I will create a maneuver node here, just so I know how far away we are from it. You know, 30-something seconds. And when we're about, I don't know, six seconds away, we'll fire. Anyway, uh, and uh, the, internal, the internal views from these new modules that we're launching was kind of cool, so I wanted to, to show those off. Um, once we have this in orbit. Alright, let's just fire up a really light burn here. We could honestly maybe even do this with RCS. Um, but, uh, alright, a little more fuel as we're now approaching the node. Just wait for this to get to 150. Notice our periaps, our apoapsis is barely changing, which is what we wanted. Good. So 150 by 151. That's close enough to circular for me. If we had burned a little bit less, uh, we could have caught it, but whatever. Who cares? So we're now in our hopefully permanent orbit. We have a bit of fuel left that we can um, perhaps use to refuel other ships uh, as they are on their way out of Kerbin's gravity well. Uh, just bring enough basically fuel to get them into orbit and then uh, we'll top them off and they'll have uh, plenty to spare for going to some other planet or whatever. Of course, this amount of fuel is not really worth doing that for, so we'll want to launch another mission bringing extra fuel as its payload and dump it into the, uh, into the space station. So anyway, as I promised, let's, um, let's have a look around the ship. First of all, look at those solar panels. Isn't that cool? It almost looks like a proper rocket, doesn't it? got an antenna, it's got like a, a pointy bit at the front, and engines at the back, and solar panels, and you know, it's, it's cool, I like it. These things look a little bit out of place, oh well. Uh, so first of all, let's see what it's like. Oh, that's not what I meant to do, but okay, sure. Let's get an EVA report. So this data is not worth anything, because we've already done an EVA report from just above the ocean, but um, remember that uh, this science lab thing can process data you've already sent home. Um, basically, you know, like every time you do some particular science experiment, you can only do it once to get like, well, there's a, a fixed total amount of science you can get out of it. And like, maybe you get that all in the first try. Maybe you have to do it over the course of several tries, but you can't squeeze any more out. There's sort of a counter, like how many times you've done the, each thing. Um, and for this space station, not the space station this orbital lab, uh, it has a separate counter. You can only do each experiment once for this thing. So even stuff we've already done is still useful. So that's why I grabbed that EVA report. Uh, and we'll do a crew report as well. Why not? Um, but what I, what I meant to do was have a look around inside the new command pod. Ooh, look at that. The planet's upside down. Very nice. Um, this is, of course, the inside of her his? Her? I don't remember who's flying this. Uh, spacesuit. And like, I don't know. 
Stuff looks mostly the same, but there's there's more knobs up here and uh, more windows than in the Mark One Command Pod, so that's kind of cool. And I see there's a co-pilot seat. Each uh, each pilot has their own control thingy. That's cute. Um, but what I wanted to Ooh, I can actually click on that. What is that? What is that actually? What is just outside? Is that the solar panels? There's nothing on the left. Shouldn't it be symmetrical? Oh, is it the antenna? No. Oh, it's a battery. Ha, <laughs> okay. Well, ruined the view by slamming a battery on there, huh? Yeah, look at this. There's the battery on the window. Oh, well. Sorry about that. Um, so what I wanted to do was... Isn't there... I know you can right-click and do transfer crew, but I had, like, accidentally discovered that you can left-click on things and transfer crew. Except it doesn't seem to actually work, so I don't know. Um, so let's just uh, right-click here. Transfer crew. Yes, transfer into the science bay. Um, so now we can't control the ship anymore, but that's fine. We're where we want it to be. And let's go have a look around in there. First of all, actually, can we go EVA? Yeah. Just hop out this hatch. Very nice. Okay. Um, but uh, let's look around in here. And so we've got now a proper, like, science bay. And I loved the labels on everything. We've got an aspirator, circuits, servos, snacks, science, experiments, tests, and tubes. Very funny. And there goes the, the planet, I guess. Yeah. Um, some post-it notes. Avoid the Kraken. Yeah, pick up Jeb. And these are actually sort of repeated, uh, so the, the post-it notes are not all unique. They've got the same things over here. Also a shopping list. Um, I like that they labeled the pipes. That's cute. Um, isn't there a... No? Okay, I'm thinking of actually the other module. So, okay. There's some sciencey looking stuff there. Great. Um... And let's go do a little tour of our last module, the Hitchhiker Storage Container. Uh, this is the living module where uh, any visitors to the space station are going to live. And you can see there's sort of uh, chairs strapped to the walls for sleeping in, I guess. I'm not sure exactly how that works in terms of beds to these fold up. Probably not in Kerbal Space Program. Like You can't actually fold them up, but in, in principle, is that what they're supposed to do? I don't know. And then they've just got basically like a whole bunch of drawers labeled different synonyms for garbage and then also food, which made me smile. Food and not food. And then like the rubbish and refuse, which might or might not be food. Uh, hatches in the top and bottom for moving around and a hatch on the outside for uh, for exiting. And some cute little pictures of, uh, oh, of a moon landing. Or Wait, is that the moon behind him? Where is he? I don't know. Anyway, uh, so that is our new space station. And uh, let's actually do something useful with it for a change. Or, well, for, for starters. Uh, which is, we have this new science-y thing, right? Uh, what I would like... How do I do that? I guess I actually have to transfer crew into the command pod, which is where all the data is being stored. Um, and actually, can I go EVA again? We shouldn't be over the ocean anymore, right? I can do an EVA report. No, it's still the same thing. Whatever. Uh, I think I should now be able to transfer... No. Review store data? Science it? No. Okay. Is there a way I can... How do I transfer it? Um, here? Start research. No. Aha. No. Transmit science. No. Okay, so you're supposed to be able to transfer science from here to here. And I did that no problem in a test game, uh, but I happened to have two people. I had a person here and a person here. It looks like um, you, you can't transfer data from the command pod to here without someone in the command pod. And, and someone here, basically, because I tried to do it with review report. I said, make the thing go, but you can't because there's no one in there. Um, so there actually is... 
Can we go EVA? Are we still above the oceans? Aha! Above grasslands. Very good. Um, so what I'm going to do, though, is actually um, take the data out while in EVA. And now uh, all of the data is stored, instead of in the command pod, it is stored in this Kerbal's head. Climb on down here? Okay, I'm a little bit worried, actually, that that ladder might not extend down all the way. I forgot, I put a... Uh, a um, reaction wheel in the top. So let's go ahead and point normal. That's the one direction that like doesn't do anything very interesting while you're orbiting. It stays basically pointing. Normal is going to be pointing up the whole way. Um, so now that we're in normal SAS, hopefully the ship won't be spinning as much, uh, which makes me a bit more comfortable, although I guess I will quick save. Why not? About climbing possibly off of this ladder. Uh, I can RCS my way back onto this ladder, I'm fairly sure, but, um, yep, okay, gonna have to. Alright, well, that's a bit of a silly reason to do a spacewalk, but, uh, not a, not a very difficult spacewalk. Um, and now, wait, where is she now? He, she, I can't even see who that is. Um... Transfer crew, yes, in here. So, now, why can't I say to do science from there, please? Research is inactive. What? Uh, okay, so maybe you do need a Kerbal here and here at the same time for some crazy reason. Uh, I don't really get it. We have a Kerbal here who brought all the data into this thing. Why can't I transfer it? Doesn't make sense to me. Um, what happens if I now say transfer crew back to here? Can I say start research? No, there's no scientists present. So basically you're not allowed to control the ship unless there's someone in the command pod, even though the, the control that you want to exert is on uh, what's happening here. Well, very funny. Uh, okay, so we're not actually going to do any science this episode, it turns out. Um, but uh, we've done a few uh, science-y... We've picked up some data, and we just have to figure out how to, how to process it. EVA report over the highlands, fine. Got some more data. Um, so this is a great excuse, in fact, to uh, send up a new Kerbal. Send up a pilot, right? We don't really need a pilot. This thing is not very complicated. It's just going to stay in this orbit forever. Um, but uh, we already have a scientist on board. If we had known this was going to be a problem, we could have sent a, a pilot up ahead of time. Um, but apparently we wanted to send an another mission up here with more science. So um, that seems fine. I'm just gonna like send a pilot and a scientist up here just to to visit, drop off the the, the pilot, and uh, fly the scientist home. I'll be including a scientist because they can get um, they can fit more science in a single trip if you like peel it off of the the science junior like while you're in atmosphere. Well, not in atmosphere, but like while you're on the ground, we can do a study of like Kerbin's ground from space, basically. Um, Anyway, so I think I think we'll do that. Um, but this all ended up taking a bit longer than I expected, getting the orbit just right and uh, taking a tour of the craft and then trying to figure this nonsense out. Um, so I think that this uh, next visit will have to be in the next episode. Uh, we'll try to bring some fuel, some science, and uh, an, another inhabitant. So that's something uh, fun to look forward to. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.